Hey guys, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on for more great content. Hey guys, this is Tapsen and joined by me, of course, by our coach Dude, Dustin. And today we are going to watch some demos from our star player, Rob. How is it going, Rob? Yeah. It's going good. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching. Well, I'm not looking forward to watching this demo because this is a game where we got absolutely smashed by your staff team. So I'm I'm already lining up the excuses. Um, but hopefully we've got some other demos that maybe I play better in or or something that you know the community can learn from. Because I think we're about to watch a lot of mistakes from myself here. So guys, before we go into the demo, I want to know what sort of things are you looking out for? Is it the mistakes? Is it the, like missed smokes? Is it how they execute, how they rotate? Just give me a bit of insight in terms of what you're looking for and what you're trying to get out of watching your own demos. So I would personally say that uh, the most important is usually the bigger picture, like looking if like if our round was a smart move, was it a good idea to play it at this time? Was this round balanced? And then you go like more into detail, like what were the individual mistakes maybe that were made? Maybe this flash yeah. was off, the smoke didn't go right. But I think the most important part is that we understand the system and the bigger picture. We look at like, is this a good round to play at this time? Why would we call this? This kind of stuff. I think that's like, usually that covers the most important aspects of a review. Awesome. And how, how often would you say it's good to review your own demos and would you would you advise people out there to to review them on their own or review them with somebody because like what i find is when individuals review them by themselves they're often not that self-critical you know they're often you know blaming their teammates or being like oh yeah i got unlucky and stuff like this but if you've got that other person there to give you that sort of honest feedback or to you know sense check what you're saying do you think that's a valuable thing to do having a second person there yeah, I definitely, I think so. Yeah, it's always good to have a second opinion, like also because it can, he can maybe uh, look the game in a different view. Like he can maybe think out of the box and stuff like that. So I think it's always good to have someone around you to watch some demos. And of course, I can always um, recommend that you watch your own demos to just see if you do some mistakes. Like as Dustin said, like just to see is your positioning good enough? Is your equipment usage good? Is your pre-aim good? Do you know where the enemy can be at this time and these kind of things? Okay, and then for, for sort of individuals um, that maybe don't have as much time to review demos or don't, you know, obviously don't play Counter-Strike full time. So I'm thinking about the casual player. Um, what would be the, the main rounds to focus on? Um, and, uh, and how frequent do you think like individuals you know the casual player should watch their own demos like is it is it worth watching a matchmaking demo or um or do you think they should just you know focus on the games where they actually put all the effort into and stuff like that so i th i think personally of course like as a casual player you're not going to invest as much time as a professional um but the time you do have i think it's even valuable to watch matchmaking demos because you will still see similar tendencies in your own play um of course best case scenario you watch like matches where you actually tried hard was actually maybe something at stake or a little bit higher um, prestige matches like tournaments or so or whatever. But even like I said, even matchmaking, face it games or whatever will be will be helpful to review because you will always see certain patterns that you're doing wrong. You will you'll be ah hmm, maybe maybe I should have done this there. Maybe I should have like held this angle longer. Maybe I should have uh, helped my teammate here had a better spacing. I think like no matter what game you will watch, you will always learn something. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I can. I definitely agree. What I can add in, uh, into that is, for example, everyone knows, like, if you play a lot of CS, I think as a casual you also play CS, but you just don't put the effort in it. So if you play CS and you are like at a decent level, I would say like matchmaking, whatever, global or something, or even a little bit less, you have some certain duels which you always lose, but you don't know why. And for example, there is always a really good. Um, like it's a, a very good help for yourself to just realize what you do wrong in these kind of um, duels because every time you have basically the same duels and if you play matchmaking whatever you go always does two out long and you don't know how you get killed from or, or mm -hmm. like these kind of things they're just the small things which you don't really realize and don't see when you play the game but if you just watch it then you will just realize it and you see it from a different view yeah definitely i think it's always good to be um, as self-reflective and as self-critical as possible even if you don't think you're in the wrong by by being self-critical you're always going to improve even if you are in the in the right here so mm. yeah um well we're going to review a demo now so uh let's get on to it let's go okay round round four 
I vaguely remember what happens here as well, because uh, this game was recent. I think I might even go for like a one-way smoke top middle that I used to know. Um, <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't throw any smoke. I'm just going apps with all my utility, which um, isn't the best usage. That's good. Window player has no vision now. So I think I call here to my team. I'm smoked off, so not to throw any smokes or, or do anything. Brucey lurks underpass and catches out to mm -hmm. So I think here, I hope here, we're going to go for an A split because there's two and A. Um, does Brucey have a smoke? No, he doesn't. But he gets the kill anyway. Oh, nice. And they, I, I thought they might go aggressive when they when there were three people down uh, or two people down. I thought maybe they're going to go aggressive, so I kind of expected it a little bit. Yeah, that's a really good um, top process there. And then... Nice. No, oh, nice shot. And then Drowlon must have hit the flick of his <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was overall a really good round. As Also by you, as you mentioned that you were like aware of the camp push. The only thing what I can recommend you after, for example, you killed the guy, just to slow down. Don't mm -hmm. even go full out uh, all in because you have the position where you can basically refract the CT guy. For example, you are here in this position, you just killed this guy and you go for information, not for the all in play. Yeah. Like you just try to give some infos and then if he CT you just swing and then can you refract this guy, for example. No. Yeah, definitely. And I still think I had a lot of utilities. So I could even smoke off connector. True. Um, yes. And then, and then the guy who was sure that I, you know, got lucky with the kill on, he should have killed me in reality. And in, in a pro match, he would have killed me 100%. Yeah, I think so too. All right, let's move on. Next round, you're going Palace again. Do you know? Do you know some utility? Like in Palace, for example, when you smoked off Shadow Molotov or... I, I used to. I used to be able to, even if um, Apps is Molotov, um, smoked off, I used to be able to line up in Apps and then, you know, run against the wall and then keep your crosshair in the same place and then be able to Molotov under... Mm -hmm. um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always, like, really helpful for your teammates. Also, it's, to be honest, like, I don't know for how it is for, uh, like, for um, other people, but for me personally, it's always like that. I want to make the the best out of my game. Doesn't matter what game I play. Is it Counter Strike? Is it a different game? That's a nice pre-aim, and um, so that that's why I try to make it so as competitive as I can. For example, I just try to use my everything what I have, and yeah. to make the best and they, to have fun while playing. But that was a nice shot, and now the patient again. Patience. If you maybe focus on the bigger picture of this round, I think it was actually not too bad because you guys were just waiting a little bit and the rounds prior you were pressuring A quite early and everything was quiet around the map as well, right? So the CTs yeah. were a bit more inclined to think you would hit A. Then they pushed up middle for information and you killed them. And I think that was a good approach overall. Let's see what masters we okay. see here. Oh, there this it is. is. This is the one way, right? <laughs> and this is where uh, it used to work, but I want to see this from Turkix's point of view. So I'm putting pressure in mid. Um, and to be honest, if if it works, it's often a kill. But, uh, usually in in like level ten face it matchmaking, I would never play this when I was playing uh, officials uh, and stuff like that. Um, but usually it's quite good to catch people out. So I want to see target to get his point of view. Okay, right. So I threw it <laughs> slightly wrong. But if yeah. you see, if it's a slightly, if it's ever so slightly to the, um... it's not a bad smoke. Yeah, I, I don't actually know that smoke. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Nor do I clearly because I, I missed through it, but I, I think I needed to throw it a little bit more to uh, Turgix's left, my right, and then it's, ah, it's right. a bit of a one way. Um, yeah, it's a good smoke, but actually, is going to be a one way, then it's really valuable. No. Ah, oh, Tabs, and you clicked. Yes. <laughs> right I'm, I'm not going to blame Tabs, I'm not going to blame the demo player. Yes, from, thank from you very CSGO. much. We can uh, continue tomorrow. We are back. <laughs> yeah. So now you're in B apps. Yeah, a ba oh, bad position, uh, yeah. Oh, nice shot. Uh, as you'll see from this, like, my kills are just from angels, not from, like, good good plays, really. Um, and that's the thing. I think I've got a lesson with uh, Tizian later on utility, um, which I think is going to help my gameplay massively. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> 
because that's the one thing I've forgotten since not playing. Yeah, yeah also in that position where you just got the kill, of course, if they had an AWP early in BFs, you mm -hmm. probably would have died. Maybe not there's, the best. There's a little, there's a little crack. There's a little crack, isn't there, that the AWPer mm -hmm. can get through. Yeah. yeah. Faking, faking the window, of course. Fucking <laughs> 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 deep connector. Yeah, because someone said um, Jalen's orping, and then yeah, that's always that's always good. If you have this kind of control on Mirage ST, you deny so much vision to this guy and also to this guy who's usually shadow. Ooh. So you get we will go card. back. Yeah. To watch it one more time, I think there was a decent call out to go through the smoke, because the smoke was not faded yet, right? No, it, it was. It wasn't faded. I thought I'd catch him off guard because Brucey was making noise on B. However, I shouldn't have done it because I could have just gone B and Adsav was coming out A already for for some reason. Um, I'm not sure why, but like I should have seen what he was doing and I should have reacted to what he was mm -hmm. doing rather than trying to play by myself a little bit. The fake fake jump. the window again, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. And the guy, there's a guy in apps that just peeks mm -hmm. out and, and kills me. Um, so I think um, the decision might have been a little bit problematic just because you were in a 5v3 situation, you were really split across the map, and you had really bad spacing. Like, two of you were short, you jumped out connector alone. Like, uh, in this situation, if you probably would have gone together somewhere, it doesn't matter where, you ha would have probably closed out the round just by refragging, you know? So you, you yeah. made it a little bit difficult for yourself. Okay, can you maybe go, f like, let us go through your mind. What do you think right now if you're in AEPS? Just working, like going slowly in front. Like, what do you, what do you think right now? What, what are you listening to? Maybe you have some kind of reads as well when you are there. Um, the the idea. So I was just gonna play a luck. So that that flashes to fake it a little bit because um, they just smoked off uh, ramp. I heard the smoke of ramps. I was like, they don't know where we are fully. So let me flash a and then let's mm -hmm. rotate and let's go together somewhere. But the reason I'm going a apps uh, occasionally um, is because I'm usually quite comfortable there and used to know a lot of utility from there. Um, and then. The, the idea is they will come up connector, we will split A, and then I'll lurk out of apps and kill the guys facing there or clear the balcony and clear under shadow from them with for them with a Molotov. Um, it's definitely a good approach, especially if you, if the goal is basically to A split. It's always good to have someone in A-apps just because of the cross. You can kill many people in the back, but now it's a 1v1 situation. You have the advantage with the shadow. Yes. Ooh, nice. Balash. Go back what to the server. Doing? Yeah, he needs to learn the shadows. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's kind of interesting what Tapson just touched on. I think maybe maybe you could talk more about what the thought process of an A lurker can be. Like I think because I think this is like something that not a lot of people think about. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, like in general, I would say it's always helpful if you before the game or like before the round starts, even that you that you basically take care of what you need to. What you need to think about, basically, like let's say, is he always throwing his smoking ramp? Is he always flashing one's ramp or something like that? So that you can actually realize the pattern of the enemy and also what mm -hmm. you can um, directly, or how you can abuse it, basically. Not with the whole team, of course, also with the whole team is um, like optional, I would say. But I don't like for yourself, it's always really important to just realize what the enemy is doing, where he is, he, where is he. Especially what you said, you like to be like if you feel comfortable in apps because of the utility usage, because of the timings which you maybe you can find for yourself going out and refrag trade these kind of things. I think there's also um, a lot of room to improve. Doesn't matter yeah. what kind of level you are basically. Now this is a le legendary call. We call it Zaivu B usually. It's the opera is going in front of B, trying to pressure the enemy so he uses utility or to get a frag. It looks like a one way. Yeah, I think he threw a bad smoke. And then I go to, to be honest, I thought he was actually gonna, yeah, I, 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 um, I took a shot because then I thought he might throw a nade from Van. If he throws a nade, um, I'll throw one back and then dodge his nade and get some damage in. But 
I don't know whether that's good logic or even worth doing, to be honest. Mm, I would say, especially if you have an AWP and you make so much noise, you always get naded. Like, it doesn't really matter how much HP you have, basically, if you have an AWP, because all you need is one shot, right? So yeah. you can have like 30 HP, it doesn't really matter, you can always survive one bullet. But if you make so much noise, you saw from the minimap just early on that there will be so much rotation going on. Like usually where the op is, there's like more people. And yeah. therefore, I, of course, like it's easier to say than done. But if you make so much noise, that's for example a good pressure situation right now. That you use so much pressure and you can see on the minimap the over rotation is going on right now. If you made... Curtis is finding out the timing. Oh, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would have been best for him not to use that grenade, but... Yeah. But, oh. Oh. Some nice shots by uh, yeah. Terabyte there. He can use there, his molly, for example, now to get him off. But, I that's a good plate. Whoa! Ooh. And the flank is coming. Oh, Curtis needs to say he can come from behind. That's a most logical so thing. Reese misses the shot, but I think he had the good read on it. Um, and then I think what's going to happen? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's very unfortunate. Uh, that's right? unfortunate yeah. <laughs> but good round overall. Yeah, yeah really I would good say so too. Especially from your individual perspective. Yeah, really well, well thrown utility to just deny vision to get close out to use maybe like to f um, like burn something away position it's nice and of course good shots by terabyte um so we've seen quite a few rounds now so we want to just summarize kind of what are the overarching points uh, and improvements that i need to make to my gameplay the first one i want to point out is utility usage uh i'm missing a lot of smokes missing a lot of nades and i'm not supporting my team as much as I can do. Like you say, like when I'm in A apps, I could be uh, throwing a flash out, I could be mollowing under dark, I could, you know, be drawing more attention to myself, opening up space, or even just, you know, clearing off angles so when my teammates come out, they don't have to focus there. So I think that is a big one for me. Uh, would you guys, would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I think yeah. so too. I think what you said puts it quite nicely. I think uh, generally just the, uh, um, the synergy with your teammates has to be improved on, but I think it's of course hard when you play with a mixed team, yeah. But uh, but I think your individual perspective was actually not too bad, yeah. Like you said, um, your uh, utility was sometimes lacking a little bit, maybe also spacing towards your teammates. But the the general overarching thing is just that you try to play with your teammates better together and yeah, close out the round together. I think you had some really great rounds here actually, and I'm quite impressed. And yeah, maybe we'll steal something from you <laughs> for the future. <laughs> So after watching Rob's Inai in the demo viewer in-game, we're now switching to a tool that we also use to analyze and to maybe look more specifically in the team situation, what could have, what we, what they could have done better, what they could have maybe improved on to see like the bigger picture now. So what would you say, guys, are the advantages of using this over sort of the in-game uh, demo player? Like we know the demo player is quite buggy itself. So is this quite a nice overview and and do you guys find it something quite useful to get like the bigger picture look yeah so i i personally think that it's much like better just because of the time investment like you will see like things that you would see in the demo player in like an hour or so you can see here in five minutes like just because of the of course the the demo player from valve isn't necessarily the greatest tool um but this especially is good to just like see the whole concept of how the team works what the patterns are all this kind of stuff and yeah like it, it's just time saving like it can be a like really important that you get a huge volume of demos in and by mm -hmm. like by using a tool like this you will just greatly uh yeah improve on your time investment maybe we can jump right into the action here with this round we saw in the review this was this a execute and we already said uh in the in the yeah in the demo viewer that uh, the problem was a little bit that there was no pressure middle yeah they they could like rotate mm -hmm. fast here because you didn't really put a top mid smoke or anything like this so it was for them they had a faster rotation maybe the window player he actually now he actually spends a longer time than i would expect in middle maybe he could have even made this rotation faster here yeah just because of his knowledge but they were already two a so i think this is totally fine and then we have of course see here this execution here that this smoke that you threw was probably not the best um i think you intended to throw this smoke if i'm not mistaken absolutely and correct <laughs> that would have been a lot better and yeah we can maybe look 
look now with the timing and the spacing here. Yeah, you throw your first flashes here. Nobody is close to entry. Yeah, um, and then after your flashes are gone, you don't have additional flashes here. Maybe uh, to actually go out with. You know. Um, yeah, you're, you're right. You can see you can see some of the A players are actually blind uh, yeah, from the flashes. Yeah. The flashes themselves weren't bad flashes, but it was what we did after. The flash, I guess. Yeah. We didn't yeah, push fast so. enough. There was a Molotov, so maybe we should use one flash, wait for the Molotov, and then yes. re reflash. Yeah, yeah, yeah like that's that. good. Yeah, and then of course, uh, let's see the spacing here. I think it was okay. Get refragged, and uh, maybe Tops has something to add. Mm, yeah, you said pretty well. Like <clears throat> also the the. Um, the, op the option to, for example, flash in the beginning to just bait out some utility as well. Usually after when they see the equipment like flying basically as a CT, you always throw something against it. Like you get naked, ah, they're coming, they're coming. And then, of course, you need to wait for the good timing to use the last like, last flash to utilize all the other equipment. And you also saw that drone was even blind in exactly what he needs to, done and needs to do with the MP9, he needs to go close, and then after, of course, it's a chaotic situation. But overall, yeah, you can see a lot of things, which are definitely nice to improve, not only on yourself, also for the team itself. Yeah. And of yeah. course, also for you individually, I would individual um, person, I would say you can also learn a lot because from the spacing, what uh, Dustin said, also for example, from the like from the understanding where the enemy can be at some point, yeah. For example, like the flanking, uh, how can be, how can someone be so fast behind us, or how, where can he be at this time, at this time, and what utility usage can I throw in the after plan situation? Because you ha just have the overall picture. Yeah. Would you would you also suggest on this A execute having someone lurking in underpass would have been a oh. uh, from the, from the radar that I looked like, or from this overview, it would have looked like it's quite a good option having someone flanking because you could yeah. catch the top guy uh the top mid guy out uh and also blizzard who's pushing apps you probably could catch him as he's rotating as well yeah usually this um this top mid guy who's pushing like that he can't usually push like that because in the normal way i would say there's a top mid smoke maybe connect the molotov like some some sort of pressure in middle so he thinks they are out middle so he can't freely push up middle but other than that, I would say also having your lurk is always um, it's always good to have. Like especially if the execute is not, I would say the best coordinated execute. You have always an opportunity. You to... guys are so polite. You you can't say it's uh, <laughs> it's pretty shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have some manners. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm on a, I'm on a Deagle, but I bought Deagle Utility rather than a SMG, which is slightly strange. Um, good teammate. Yeah, good teammate, I think, is also okay. team um, positioning-wise. I, I had a feeling they were going to be splitting B. So if you look at my... we I think we got Brucey in underpass. Mm -hmm. um, just mm -hmm. break down the round. He's, he's in underpass. He's waiting for a push there. I think I'm going to go check short. Um, and I don't really see sort of too much, aside from some utilities. I back off. I'm like, I'm not going to take this fight with a Deagle. So mm -hmm. I'm playing in this pillar. But because nobody's got window and the guys are on A... Um, are not really watching middle at all. I was very aware that they could get into window and flank us around middle. So I'm checking sort of short and uh, app slightly. I think I called to Terabyte to try to watch, yeah, kitchen. Um, and he kind of, he's kind of like looking for it there. Um, so am I looking there at the moment, which is kind of bad. But then I think I check apps. And then when I see some sort of utility coming, I throw uh, Molotov um, and maybe a nade. Uh, if I get the nade out in time, I do, and then I nice play nade. close to the deagle to get two body shots, and then I think I pick up the maybe the AK and then um, go to car to get some good angles um, after the Molotov because they wouldn't expect you expect me there, especially with terabyte being there. Then I think I get maybe a, a kill, and I no, then I then I die. But the <laughs> idea was all right. Yeah, it was a good idea for sure. I would say in the beginning, um, it's. Like in the beginning, you definitely need to help Brucey more. Like you just use your utility to help him more. For example, Molotov close middle so he, no one can push him back from under. Get mm -hmm. it, get, flash in middle maybe to peak mid ramp. Smoke maybe catwalk off so they have some a little bit pressure and Brucey can use this kind of timings where maybe they spam the smoke and Brucey knows exactly where they are spamming from. 
so you can use the timing to just um yeah out time the enemy basically but That's other than really that in the, in the in the end i would say also very good handled yeah like you said yeah. you use your utility very good here you had you pulled out the molo basically just you waited only for the execute and you you handled it pretty well yeah, yeah. Uh, like Tubson said, the utility usage was really good at this point here. I think this is like a really hard round to win at this stage. You don't really have yeah. good weapons. You're 4v5. I think maybe also not the best decision or best uh, execution from the big staff here. Um, but yeah, you played it really well at this point here, I would say. No. Yeah, it looked like they went in a, a bit too dry. Um, but you're right, actually, that, that is a really, really, really good point that you made that tabs in is. And I think that's something maybe people don't really think of. Like, so yeah, one of the most common ways of helping your teammates that people think about is like trade fragging or being able to flash for them or being able to smoke for them. I can't do any of that, like actually to directly impact mm -hmm. him to get him the kill, but I can use my utility in certain ways to get him information or mm -hmm. slow down the T's um, and therefore Make him make him in a better position where he can get a frag sort of more indirectly rather than actually pop flashing for him or something like this. So that's something <laughs> I don't think people think about as much, and that's I guess the little bit of details that you know the pros have and the sort of amateur players don't really think about it as much. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly sure. that's well true. I want to say a big thank you to Tabson and Dude. You guys are awesome for helping me review my demos. Uh, I'm one more step closer to being a pro player. But um, no, there's lots of good insight in there and how to review your demos and kind of things to look out for. So guys who are watching, I really hope this helped you. And uh, comment uh, in, the, in the comment section which demos you would like us to, to review maybe next time. Thanks for watching.